What's going on guys? We have another project we'd like to share with you today. I did want to tell you guys we have had some technological issues. In order to give you guys the best viewing experience possible, I've had to edit out a lot of glitches. I had an SD card that went rogue on me. I've had to trim out a whole bunch of video. Hopefully you guys can still be able to get what you need to out of the video to see what it is we're doing and understand the process we went through to build this project. So we apologize for the complications with the video. Technology is really cool sometimes and sometimes it really sucks. But we are going to try to get it edited in such a way that you can still enjoy the project that we're working on. We just wanted to make you guys aware of that and we hope you guys enjoy the video. All right, we've got our material all unloaded and sitting in the shop, so we're ready to start cutting parts. So let me give you guys a rundown on what we're gonna be building tonight. So this here is a drawing that the customer gave us, just kind of a hand sketch of a table. So this table, this is for a company who deals in a lot of landscape materials. What they're gonna do is they're gonna buy a set of these drive rollers for like doing fab work. So they're gonna have us build a table that that mounts to. Then they're gonna set those big rolls of weed barrier or felt or whatever it may be that the customer wants. And they're gonna set it on those rollers and the rollers are gonna turn and basically dispense the material that they're gonna sell to the customer and it'll have a pan on the side of it and so they can cut it and then roll the material up throw it in the back of their truck and they're gone so that's what we're going to be building tonight this table is 4x12 so it's actually the same size as my welding table we'll be talking about that a little bit later so we're going to take and build the frame we're going to try to get all the parts cut tonight I don't know that we'll get to fitting tonight because it's already seven o'clock and we haven't had dinner. But we're gonna see if we can't cut the parts out and get everything prepped and ready to go for tomorrow and then we'll be able to fit everything. The legs are four by four square tube, quarter wall. There's framework on the bottom that ties the legs together. That's out of two by two square tube, quarter wall. There's gonna be a stiffener that runs underneath that's two by two angle. There's flat bar brackets on the one side that'll hang down and they'll hold the pan that'll catch the material. And the other tricky part about this project is we're going to have to take the plasma and cut two grooves down the, down the table. And those will be the grooves that the bolts will slide up and down. So that depending on what size of material or what size the roll is that they're dispensing, they can slide that roller, that back roller, up and down. It'll make more sense as we get going. But. So that's, that's what we're working on tonight. We're gonna start figuring out the measurements for this and get us a cut list going. Then we'll go over the saw and start cutting. So we'll go to that point.
Oh, chicken nuggets. <laughs> That's how I pay my children. They come out here and work, I give them chicken nuggets. <laughs> First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hit this piece of plate with a buffing disc, clean all the rust that's on it off, and then we'll start laying it out. All right, we got our piece of plate all cleaned up. Now we're gonna go ahead and start laying this out. I'm gonna set the legs up on here. I'm gonna go ahead and lay out where the corners are gonna go. Set the legs up here. I'll get those tacked to the plate. And then I'm gonna just build the frame around that. We're not gonna put a lot of weld on this plate. We want the tabletop to stay as flat as possible. We want as little warpage as possible. So we're just gonna put little teeny stitches on our stiffeners and where the legs go. We don't need a whole bunch of weld to hold this together. We just need enough that it's gonna hold everything in line and hold the tabletop where it needs to go. So we're gonna go ahead and take our tape measure here and start laying this out. We're just gonna build this one similar to the table here. That's actually what gave this customer the idea to build this table. He saw my table and he wanted a drive roller table and he likes the dimensions of this table so that's where he got the idea. So we're just going to build it similar to this. Leg size is different but the plate size is different as well. So, Okay so we're coming off the ends 12 inches and then we're coming off the outside edge 8 inches. Music to my ears. Ooh, that's nice. Aim small, miss small. The more precise you can get with your soapstone, the more precise you'll be with your layout. So just another little pointer. Okay, so some of you guys have probably noticed when I lay stuff out, I always use a crow's foot. This is a crow's foot. Okay, so it's basically a V, but it's a very precise V. The reason I prefer this method is because it gives you a very precise point. Again, the more precise you can be, the better off you're going to be when it comes time to tack stuff together. Once you make your crow's foot mark, then you take your square, you line it right up, and I'll actually hold it off. I'll offset it just the width of the point of my soapstone. And that puts it right on the money. Okay. So that's our four corners right there. That's basically all we have to lay out on the table. And now we'll be able to start tacking everything up. We're gonna use dual shield to tack everything up and to weld everything together. I'm gonna grab the XMT 350. We'll roll it over here and start tacking. We're just gonna take the buffing disc, the flap disc, and knock all the burrs off. got visitors. Look, they brought Bridgie some chicken nuggets. Yeah, my 13 year old eats like a three year old. Mm. 
I thought it was chicken nuggets. It's actually a little more manly. It's a meatball. See, this is what men eat. And we approve. Those were good. All right. So thinking about it, I just had a thought that's going to save us a little time. So I'm going to I'm going to pull my measurement on this and mark them before I tack them on. That way I don't have to pull the measurement like this and mark it. It's just it's going to save us a little time. There's framework tying the legs in, so if I put my marks on now, I'm not going to have to sit and fight it. So I just think it'll be quicker and easier. Okay, so we want to be 10 inches off the floor to the top of our framework. Okay, so there's one. So now, we'll go ahead and stand this up. So then I'll put it on my marks. You can see how accurate you can get with mark like that. And the next thing I want to do, square it off the table. Very rarely is something like this ever perfectly square. You always have to massage it just a little bit. So I square this up. The leg actually needs to go this way. So what I'll do is I'll tack here first. I'm gonna tack this corner because it actually needs to go this way just a little bit too. So I'll tack this corner so that I can still go this way and this way and I'll square it again and then I'll put another tack on the opposite corner and that should get us really close. I'm going to tack the other two sides and I'm going to hurry and hit this side and then bounce to the other side. corner I'm going to tack is this corner because it's got to go this way and it's got to go this way. So I'll tack this corner which will pull it this way and I'll still be able to square it up and then I'll, I'll get it where I need it and then I'll tack this corner here. Hopefully you guys understand what we're doing with tacking the legs. It's kind of time consuming so we're going to go into warp mode. We'll go ahead and get all the legs tacked up and then we'll come back when we're tacking the frame. Okay, so for those of you like me who can't quite afford fireball tools, squares yet, this is how I've always fit stuff like this. I've just taken a piece of angle and I've got it clamped to the leg. We'll do the same thing on that end and then what we'll do is we'll take our piece of tube, set it up on there, pull a measurement with our tape, make sure we're centered on the leg, and tack it out. This is, this is one way you can fit big stuff like this without having two people to hold each end and it's moving around. It's just a lot more accurate this way because you set it right there, tack it, and bam, you're done. Me and Bridger are going to set it up there. We'll get it tacked up.
Okay, so we really didn't have to put any pressure on that. It's still pretty loose, but that was just enough pressure to pull those legs tight. They just, they pulled just a little bit when we tacked them. So this measurement here is right on the money. So to pull that in just a little bit, I think it's gonna be right on. Okay, so I got my angle set up here on both sides. These are basically just to help stiffen the table and keep it straight. So I've got them set up here and I did tack them on here. I haven't tacked the middle yet. I did lay this other stitch pattern out and I'm just going every two feet and I'm staggering my stitches. So I'll pull two feet, mark it, two feet, mark it. And then on the back side, I'll pull one foot, mark it, and then pull two feet so that the stitches are staggered. That's another thing that's gonna help distribute the heat. And then the other thing I'll do is when I do weld these up, I'll bounce around. So I'll weld one over here, I'll weld one over here, one over here, one over here. That way it distributes the heat and it's not just me going to town and putting heat in it from this end to this end because that's really what's gonna cause it to warp so so we'll go ahead and lay the stitches out on this one gonna go through and get these tacked on now I'm gonna have Bridger push this down to the table while I tack it usually what I like to do if it doesn't have to go a long ways I'll use the handle on the hammer and push it down like this that way his hands not in the way you're not burning your gloves and you can get a lot more direct pressure with the handle on the hammer so we're going to do that right now. So everything's tacked up now. Everything else is tacked in good. So we're ready to start welding. I think what we're going to do is we're going to start with the tabletop. 
I am going to clamp this tabletop down to the table in hopes that even if it does try to pull, it's not going to pull much. We want the tabletop as flat as possible. So It's time for today's super cool tool. Alright guys, so for today's super cool tool, we're going to be talking welding table. We've actually had quite a few comments, questions about the welding table, and the welding table was actually a huge part of this project. We're going to go over what it took to build the welding table, approximately how much it cost at the time, uh, what the dimensions are, what the benefits are, what the downfalls are. Alright, let's roll into it. So. The tabletop is one inch thick. It is a 4x12 sheet. So the height on the table is 37 inches. I'm a fairly tall guy. I'm six foot, so 37 inches for me is a very comfortable working height. If you're a little bit shorter, you might want to cut that down an inch or two and make it a little easier for you to work off of. Okay, so the frame, the legs on it are 6x8 tube. 3 8 wall and I actually got those for free because they were drops from my previous job and my boss just gave them to me so I was able to get those for free and then I bought a piece of 2 by 2 square tube quarter wall and built a runner that ties the legs together and holds everything square You could build that like this table and then put a shelf underneath if you'd like. Uh, but there are times where I, I kind of like not having anything there. And it is nice when you have a shop stool and you want to slide it underneath there. So, so it just depends on what your preference is. Um, the vise on it is a Wilton vise. It's the Mechanic Pro model. It's been a good vise. I've had good luck with Wilton. Just some interesting information. For those of you who don't know, when you're setting up a welding table, if you're right-handed, you want to put your vise on the left-hand corner. So, I've got my table here. I'm right-handed, so I want the vise on the left-hand corner. If you're left-handed, you want it on the right-hand corner. And I, I honestly don't know what the reason for this is. I just know that if you look it up in like the Millwright handbook, it'll tell you that that's where you want to mount your vise if you're right-handed. And to be honest, I've always had them mounted on the left-hand corner, and I, I just like them there. Anyway, just some useless information for you. So the table weighs approximately 2,200 pounds. This can be a good thing and a bad thing. It's a really good thing when you're working on really heavy equipment and you need a table with a lot of weight and mass to it so it's not moving around on you. I've put reamers in this vise and heated them up to four or five hundred degrees and then been pounding on them with a sledgehammer. I've had pipe wrenches with three foot cheaters on them and I've hang been hanging from them. The table doesn't move because it's 2200 pounds. That's the good part. The bad part is if you don't have a forklift it's going to live where it is until you rent a forklift or whatever. But for somebody who's got a little bit smaller shop, a table this size is probably going to be a challenge to move around. And not that you'll need to move it around much, but when you do, it can kind of be a pain. If you do decide to build a table of this size, or any size for that matter, it's always a good idea when you call your steel supplier to tell them that you're building a table and they're usually really good to work with you and help you out. But the reason you want to tell them that you are building a table is because when you tell them on the phone, I'm building a table and I want the plate to be as flat as possible. They're usually really good to go out into the steel yard and, you know, check them with level or whatever and make sure they get you as flat of a piece as they can. And that really helps because you know you want one as flat as possible. And so that's just another pointer for you guys that are thinking about building your own welding table. 
make sure you ask for the flattest piece that they can provide you with. Something else that you may want to think about, if you look underneath this table here, I've added some pretty heavy duty, these are three inch by three inch by quarter angle for stiffeners. And so they run the whole length of the plate and that's to try to help keep it from bellying in the middle. One inch steel plate doesn't typically have an issue with that, but I just thought it would be added security. You want to remember that when you are building a table, to only do stitch welds when you're welding the frame to the tabletop. The reason you do that is because you don't want to cause warpage on your tabletop. And so you don't want to put a whole bunch of heat into it. So just make sure you go through and just put little stitches. You don't need a whole bunch of structural weld on there. Just keep that in mind as well. Some other ideas that you may want to think about if you are thinking about building your own welding table. There have been times with some of the other tables that I've worked off of where people will drill a hole in a number of locations on the table. And that can come in handy if you're fitting something round or something conical you can use those holes to help pull things together and they're just kind of handy for fitting so welding tables are definitely something that the bigger the better and obviously if you build them bigger you want them to have a little bit more mass so that there's less belly less movement less warpage that sort of thing. This table's been awesome for me. This is the exact same design of table that I learned on and that I've spent numerous hours welding on. One of the things that's so handy about having a table like this is you can tack stuff to it and it helps you fit. And you're not worried about grinding the tacks off when you're done because it's a one inch steel plate and you can always fill the divots in and grind them back off. It's not a big deal. And because it's one inch plate, it's gonna take the heat a lot better than like a 3 8 thick or half inch thick piece of plate. So the heavier you can go, the better. So that's pretty much our welding table. I hope that answered you guys' questions and I hope you guys got something out of that. If you get the chance, Build you a welding table. It's a super handy tool to have, and it's always nice to have not just a welding table, but it's nice to have this table when I'm working on something. There's been numerous projects where I'm working on something mechanical, and I've got parts spread out throughout the whole table, and it's nice to be able to separate things and keep things organized because I've got all this workspace. And I'm sure you guys have noticed I like to keep my shop nice and clean so when I do start the project I've got workspace to work on you know it's not doing you any good if it feels full of crap and it stays there for six years so another little bit of advice I would give you is if you have a table for welding or for mechanicking or for whatever it may be that you use it for use it for that and keep it for that. When you use it for a project, that's great. Use it for the project, but when you're done with the project, clean it off, clean the tabletop off. I always take a buffing disc and buff all the berries and spatter off the top of this. I sweep it off, and then sometimes I'll wipe it down with WD-40 just to get that extra little bit of dust off of there. And it'll last you your whole lifetime if you take care of it and you'll always have that workspace that you can utilize when it's time to come out into your shop and use it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this segment. If you have any more questions about the table or any other shop tools, drop it in the comment section below. Let's get back to the project. I'm gonna keep these stitch welds as small as possible. So I'm not gonna lay a nice heavy one in there. I'm just gonna go pretty quick keep a nice small bead and just try to keep the heat minimal so I'll weld one over here and then bounce over and weld another one we'll go ahead and get this clamp down and then we'll start bouncing around and we're not going to put you guys through the agony of watching this whole thing but we are going to go into warp mode
Okay, so I'm going to give you guys another pointer. This is something that I like to do. I'm sure not everybody is going to agree with me here, but with something like this, where it's not like it has to pass a weld test or you got to make sure it's 100% pen, 100% penetration, or something like that. If it's just something that needs to be structurally welded and it needs to be sound, but you also want it to look good. I'm a big believer that your welds still need to look good. Let me give you an example of something I like to do. Okay, so I've got the table upside down, right? And I'm wel I've welded all the flat welds I can weld on the frame. And I'm going to flip it after this, after we get the stitch welds all done and the framework all done. I'm going to flip it and I'm going to weld the other stuff flat. If you can flip the stuff you're welding to a position where you're comfortable and where the weld is going to look the best it can, do it. Don't piss around with, oh, I'm a welder, I can weld it up, down, left, sideways, right, left, between my legs, I'm a welder. Which is great. If you can do that, that's great. But it's always good if you can just reposition what you're welding and still have a pretty weld. I'm not saying you shouldn't be able to weld things out of position, you should. And I believe that you should practice and you should get to where you can weld a pretty weld in those positions as well. But if you can weld it flat, you're always gonna make a prettier weld welding it flat than you are out of position. Now when I say that, I mean with dual shield because it's so fluid. So with a vertical weld like this one, where this doesn't have to pass a weld test or anything like that, it just needs to be a good sound, pretty weld. What I'll do is I'll, I'll do what's called triggering. And so I'll just trigger those up. And so if you look at this here, this is what it looks like after I weld it up, okay? So I'm basically just, I start at the bottom and I tack and I move up and I tack and I move up and I tack. So it's just a tack on top of another tack is what it is. But when you're done, it can look really pretty if you practice and you get good at it. I used to work with a guy who was an artist with this stuff. So if I hit this with a wire wheel, you can see I've got to knock some spatter off of that, but it's not an eyesore. And I'm sure a lot of people think that's petty, but for something like this, triggering works great. So I would encourage you guys to practice triggering. If it's something like this that doesn't, you know, if it's not pipe or something like that, it has to be perfect. If it just needs to be sound and look good, triggering is awesome for this kind of stuff, especially when you're running dual shield. I'm not saying it's the same story for short arc and TIG and stuff like that. But when you're running dual shield, if it's out of position and you've got to run a vertical weld like this, I would say practice triggering because you can make it look pretty dang good. I'm going to run one and I'm going to show you guys how I do it. Okay, so you can see I got a joint here that's not done yet. Okay, so I'm going to trigger this one up. So just pay attention to the sound. Pay attention to how quick I move from one tack to the next. Another pointer, if you are going to practice this method, set your hood so that the delay is not quite as long, so that it's a little quicker, because it's just a tack, so it's not going to blind you, but it's going to, it's going to turn on while you're welding, and then it's going to turn off, turn on, turn off. If you have a long delay, it takes a lot longer to do this, and personally, I don't think you can make it look quite as good unless you turn the delay down on your hood so that you can have some good timing to where you're not waiting a long time in between tacks. So watch how fast I do this and you'll see what I mean. turned out pretty good. Now if I hit it with a wire wheel,
you're able to do a lot more with dual shield if you learn to weld like this. So you run your flats and there's times, there's times where you flat just can't position what you're welding. And so you're gonna have to either run it uphill or you can trigger it. Now, I'm proficient enough with dual shield I could run it uphill and it would probably look pretty dang good, but I prefer the way this looks over just running it solid uphill. Anyway, it's just a pointer I wanted to throw out there. If you do start running dual shield and you're welding something like this, give trigger in a try. It's, it looks good, it's clean, and then if you go through and you clean up your welds, clean up your spatter, it just it looks really good. And I'm a big advocate for making your welds look good. If you do a job, and the customer sees your welds and they're like, wow, those welds look really pretty. I promise you they're gonna be more likely to come back and they're gonna tell more people about your work because it looks good and you took the time to clean it up and make it look nice. All right, so I got a few more of these to do. So we'll go back into warp mode. I'll finish up these few stitches and verticals and then we'll go from there. So we got all our welding done on the frame in this position. We are going to flip it, but we're not going to do that tonight. It's Friday and it's 9 o'clock, so I'm going to go in the house, eat some dinner, and have a little family time. And tomorrow, we'll flip it over after it's completely cooled. That's the other thing I wanted to do, is I want to keep it clamped to the table until it's completely cooled. And then tomorrow, I'll flip it back over. All right, guys, we're back out here today. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna clean all of our welds up with a wire wheel. We're gonna take our fireball scraper. We're gonna knock all the spatter off, chisel, hammer, get all the BBs off. We'll get this all cleaned up. We'll go from there.
right, so we got our table rolled over. I think with a table this size, there is a little bit of flex in it. As long as you get the legs really close on your measurements, you won't have any wobble. And there's zero wobble on this one. Now I want to show you guys how flat we were able to keep this by bouncing around and keeping our heat distributed evenly. So hopefully you guys can see that on camera, but it's, it's pretty tight the whole way. There's just a hair off the end. That's, that's perfectly flat right there. This is not going to be as flat as one of those fancy welding tables that you would buy that's got a machine surface. So it's not going to be, you know, laser beam. But for being hot rolled plate, I think we did pretty good at keeping this as flat as possible. There is hardly any there's no movement there, so I'm pretty happy with how flat it is. If you look down the edge of the table, it's pretty dang flat. For them, where the purpose of this table was just a drive roller table, 3 8 plate for the tabletop was just fine. But if you're going for flatness, you're always going to be better off if you go with 1 inch plate or even thicker. And that's extremely heavy, but it's going to be easier to keep flat. So, for what for what they need it for, I think this is going to do them just just fine. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. We're going to have to break this one up into two parts. So make sure you stay tuned for next week, where we'll continue on with this project and finish this one out. We also wanted to give a huge thank you to you guys that watch our channel we have hit a thousand subscribers a lot faster than we thought we would so we're extremely grateful for that and we just wanted to tell you guys thank you as a thank you we did want to do a drawing and make sure you stay tuned for the results on the drawing like subscribe and share if you're not already and we'll see you on the next one We want as little. We want to. <laughs> Let me see. Let me see your boot. You guys gotta see this. <laughs> Let me see. He's got slobber on his boot. Don't say that. <laughs> I'm not sure why he was slobbering. Bridger's our pet Saint Bernard. <laughs> Come here. Come help me fit this. Drop me the sand it. Send it. Send it. Send it. So now I'm going to run one and, and I'm going to show you. Grab me that tape, boy. Hurry. Man, live. Find a new gear. Oh, there it is. <laughs> it feels like sandlot. Or for any size. Or of any, mm. if you do decide to build a table like this, or for any size, <laughs> uh.